So I'm gonna go over an awesome double trick exercise. Um, and uh, I have a worksheet I'm gonna be sending home with you. All right. um, which has everything from singles to doubles to groupings of three, paradiddles, fives, um, to sixes I have paradiddle diddles, to sevens, and how to use all that stuff around your kit. So it's not just you practicing on your pad, okay, I can play a paradiddle, but I can go. And you can actually use it in an effective way, in a way singles would be kind of hard to do. So that would be singles, paradiddles, I could do the same thing, the same sound. It's like me playing. And all of a sudden. So how do you use rudiments? That's the most important thing about a rudiment, right? Not just the fact that you can play it, but the fact that you can use it, right? Um, so I have a worksheet I'll send with you guys, or yeah, with you specifically for that. Um, yeah, it's awesome to have you here. Casey, um, you know, definitely rudiments uh, are something you want to work on too, as well as um, any other categories that you're interested in. I'm, I'm pretty you're open. Pretty I mean, open, huh? since, since I'm in to, to engineering mostly now, yeah. I don't spend as much time behind the kit, behind the but kit, I'm yeah. still trying to stay pretty fresh. fresh. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So these exercises are all things you can do. Um, you know, a kit like this is pretty nice because it's quiet. You can have this in your apartment, not have any problems with it. Um, but you can also, you know, practice a lot of this stuff on the seat you're on, just on your knees. And so you don't actually have to have a pad or a pair of sticks. Right. And that stuff will translate. You know, if I'm working on a five stroke, I take that movement, that sound, that muscle memory, and So, it, so it's actually applicable, it transcends just you playing on your lap to the kit. Um, and then Christian, for you, we're gonna get into some metal stuff. All right. <laughs> um, I have uh, the four different types of, four different sounds and blast beats. Um, there's two different types of blast beats, four different sounds as a result. Okay. Uh, I've created some tabs to cool. uh, show that. And then also double bass, which everyone yes. is really interested in. Um, it's taken me about a decade to get to where I am with it, and I'm still growing. You know, there's, there's still a lot of room to grow there. So, uh, let's get started with the uh, double stroke exercise. Um, this will definitely be applicable for all you guys, um, but it's a rudiment um, that, for years, I didn't really know how to use double strokes. You know, I I knew how to use them in regards to like a group in a three. We are going right, left, left. Yeah, that's a double stroke on your left, right? So I'd play it, say the groove was one and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a two E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. I'd use it in regards to or in the, or the, uh, the confines of a sixteenth note pattern. So it's one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E. And so I'm playing doubles there, but I didn't really know how to use them around the kit. I didn't know how to practice. Uh, making my left hand as strong as my right. For me, it seemed like when I did a double, the first stroke was always louder than the second one. Right? So how do you get those even? And the goal is to get your double strokes to sound like singles. Right? You want it to be pretty similar in sound, consistent, or as far as consistency. Okay. Right. This exercise teaches you how to put dynamics on all four different parts um, of a 16 note pattern using double strokes. So, here's what I mean. First part, there's four parts. First part, you put the accent on the right hand. Okay. And I'll send you guys this worksheet so you can see it, you can hear it, but you can hear the accent on the one E and the two E and the two E and the four E and the one E and the two E and the three E. And actually, if you slow this down a little bit, one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the. So it's got sixteenth notes. We can keep our pulse with our left foot on the quarter note, now which are the numbers. So one, two, four. In between each of those are four strokes, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Those are called sixteenth notes. So 
whenever you hear a song and you pump your fist to the pulse of the song, that's the quarter note. That's this. That's the guts of that song. Okay? That's your starting place. Okay? Quarter note. From a quarter note, watch this. I, and I wish someone had showed me this 10 years ago because I was so confused for years. To get to a quarter, or from a quarter note to an eighth note, the next subdivision, get, so find your quarter note, the, the uh, fist pumping part. <laughs> Put that on your right hand. That's your quarter note, all the numbers. One, two. Bring in your left hand to get the eighth notes. There's eighth notes. Okay? So you start with quarters on the numbers. Bring in your left hand to get eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and still keeping the pulse with my left hand. Now take those eighth notes, put it on just your right hand. Now you have eighth notes, right? How do you get the sixteenth notes? Left hand. There's our sixteenth notes. Okay. Take that to just to your right hand. How do you get the thirty-second notes? Same thing, right? Thirty seconds. So if someone says, man, I can't play 30 second notes. Really? I bet all of you guys can do this. I mean, even if you're like, you can still do it. I mean, everyone can go for a little bit, right? Those are 30 second notes. If that's the tempo, that's your pulse, that's your quarter note. How did I get there? Quarter notes with the right hand, bring in the left. Eighth notes are two strokes per pulse. One, two, one, two. Count it. One and two and three and two. Take that to just your right hand. Get the sixteenth notes. Sixteenth notes are four strokes per pulse. Bring the left hand. One, two, three, four. 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 Take that to just your right hand. Now you have what? About thirty second notes is next. Or next. So I can't play thirty second notes in my video. I don't know. Maybe you can. Right? That's not that fast. Right? Okay, so that's just a little music theory without all of the complications there. It's just a really easy way. Quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteen notes, thirty seconds. I use all of them in ABR. A lot of times we're using sixteenths and thirty seconds. Which people say, oh, it's so fast, your music's so fast. It's not the fastest thing, it's just a lot of times we're using more strokes per pulse than a lot of other music. Like a Taylor Swift song, you could be playing at this pulse, be gone. Right? All day long. And that, that, that suits her music. If it was ABR, it'd be like... Right? So it's like the same tempo. I didn't change the tempo there. It's just... That's Taylor Swift. All right, it's ABR, it's... Right, so, yeah, it sounds fast, but it's the, the tempo is slow. That's just 30 second notes. And at the end there, it was like 30 second note triplets or something. Yeah, too fast. So anyway, you get the point. Okay, so that's a little bit of music theory, and that, that stuff's really important to know what you're playing. It's important to know what you're playing, not just how to play it, but what you're playing. So double stroke exercise, four parts. First part, exit the right hand. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a right 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 right. So you can see my right hand's coming up really high. If this is like twelve o'clock on a clock, that's where I should. That's where I should be uh, striving for. My left hand is about an inch or two off the drum. That's what you want. Okay, these are all double strokes. It's just my right hand's accent. Next, we're going to go to left hand accent, but watch what happens. So, we're still starting with our right hand. The left hand's accent, right, right, left, left. So it's the and us that are accent. 
So we started with the right hand accented, one E and a two E and a quarter note. Okay. We're going to switch to the left hand accent, which means the left hand, instead of coming off the drum an inch, is going to come off up to 12 o'clock and the right hand is going to stay down. This is hard because your right hand is used to being dominant, right? Especially if you're right handed. So you're going to tell your right hand to stay down and left hand to come up. One E and a two E and a here we, here we go. Four E and a one E and a two E and a three E. So we didn't switch the downbeat. It's still right there. One E and a. So here's the first one. Second one. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, next one we're going to go to is inverteds. Okay, inverteds are one of my favorite things to do in the kit. So it's one, two. Now listen to what happens to the accent there. Da -da, da -da, da -da. It's not starting on the downbeat, it's starting on the upbeat. How do you do that? Still double strokes, but it's going to start with one stroke, and then all the rest are double. So the second one of those double strokes is on that high hat. How you doing, man? You here for the lesson? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. We started off with um, accenting. So we're doing double strokes. And we started off with accenting on the right hand. So these are 16th notes, keeping your pulse on your left foot. So one E and the two E and the so Your right hand's coming up high. Left hand's staying pretty low. Then we're going to move on to the second part, which is accenting the left hand. But it's still right hand lead. So it's still one E and the two E and the three E and the four, but it's gonna be one E and up, and up, and up, and up. So you get kind of this country vibe. You know, hi hats on the downbeat, you have kind of this shuffle sound here in like a Johnny Cash song. Right. right? But there's some independence here because your left hand isn't used to, you know, that to, to uh, yeah, keeping that accent if the left foot's keeping the downbeat. Uh, the third part of it, which I'm on now, is the right-handed inverts. Okay, inverts. So it's going to be starting with the right hand, one single, and that inverts the whole thing. So it's going to be one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the. And I like to use this um, if I'm sweeping. It's called sweeping on the kit when you're going. So on that double stroke, that one, two, you're just going to move your hand from drum to drum, symbol to symbol. Okay? And that takes some time to get used to that feeling, but this is incredibly effective if you want to have two different accents or two different sounds. Um, so you have one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one E and the two E. And the So let's say we use this as our groove. Okay, where's the downbeat? So you can see that the second of the doubles is on that downbeat. Bum, 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 bum. One E, a two E, a three, a four, a one. So it's going to take time for your brain to get used to that because you might be used to playing one E and two E and three. And this is flipping it on the upbeat. The last one is left-handed inverts. Okay. So in this case, instead of just starting with the right hand, you're going to start with the left on a single. And that's much too fast to start. Because what I want you to do is really focus on each stroke. So I want you to one E and a two E and a three. And when you're playing, a lot of people say, you know, let the stick bounce back up at you, you know, really focus on that rebound. That's good. But when the rubber meets the road and I'm up there playing, you're not really worried about how much the stick's coming back at you. You're just going to play the part, you know, as best as you can. So the time to work on that rebound and on that technique is in your practice time. It is on your pad. So in order to work on that, left, right, right, left, left, work on that stick rebound and keeping the right hand really low. Set up a mirror or a camera and watch how your hands are working together. That'll really help you and humble you. Say, man, I need help. And then put in that quarter note. One E and the two E and the three E and the four E and. OK, 
fast. So let's go through the whole sequence. Four parts. What's the first part? You accent your right hand. Second part, accent your left hand. The end up. Third part, inverted with the right. Fourth part, inverted with the left. Okay? So here's how I'll practice it. I'll turn on just maybe the first one of these. I'll start at a pretty, pretty medium tempo. Uh, I would say a good goal speed for this would be something like 110. And I want you to be able to play this for a minute. You can play it for a minute, then you can move on. But you gotta play it for a minute. Okay, so where's your quarter note? Where you pump your fist, right? So you pump your fist. So where's your 16th note? Well, let's start with quarters. Quarters, go to eights. Take that to just your right hand. How do you get the 16th? Bring in your left. Yeah, there's your 16th. So that's what the sound we want to create with doubles. Go to doubles. Now, these are doubles. This is a great thing. Okay, but now we start to throw in these accents. Now it's time to you know, grow up a little bit, right? Work on this. So really focus. So right hand's going to come way up. Left hand's way down. Next is our left hand. So we're going to go from accenting your right side, one in, two in, to end up, which is. Now we're going to go to inverted, starting with the right hand. Then we're going to go to our left hand. Now, here's what I like to do. Separate your hands and create two different sounds. Okay, here we go. Right hand and accent. Left handed. Right hand and invert. Left hand and invert. You're getting all of that from double strokes. So now all of a sudden, it's not just, oh man, I'm playing double strokes. I know how to play them. I mean, this is cool, but as soon as you start to put some juice behind it, then you start to, to, to experiment with displacement. Where are the accents now? They're going to be on four different parts of the beat. And so you're accomplishing three things really. One, your double strokes are getting better because you're not you know, just accenting the first hit harder like a lot of people do with doubles. All right? You're accenting both. Uh, you're also learning how to hear the downbeat even though you're displacing the accents. That's still the downbeat regardless of me going. Um, and also you're learning a little bit of independence, being able to keep this going yeah. and still play your double strokes. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Does anyone want to give that a shot? But I mean, we could take it really slow. It's okay if you don't. I'm sending this stuff home with you guys. Just it's on pad or just on the On this thing. I give it a shot. Come on up. You should. This is the place to learn. You'll never get another chance to, uh, you know, to try here unless you try it. <laughs> you will get another chance at home. What pad is this right here? That's a uh, Gibraltar um, bass drum practice pad. Okay, Gibraltar, cool. Mm -hmm. cool. I bought that about 10 years ago. Holding up pretty well, huh? Yeah. I put in a lot of time practicing double bass. Now, when you practice, do you always keep this going? No. But I might as well. Um, I, I feel like I might as well keep it going if I'm going to teach myself independence. Okay. So it's not a must, but if I'm thinking about it, I'm going to try to keep my high home because that's hard. That's hard to keep that going and keep the rest of your drumming uh, maintained. All right, so let's slow, us down. let's slow it down a little bit here. Now 105. So what are 16th notes going to sound like? Good. Okay. How are the accents going to start? Right hand. So 1E. Right hand. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Inverted. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because to create an inverted, to, to invert the beat means to flip it, you're going to start with just one stroke. 
and that's going to flip it inside out. So go back to that again. Uh, so start with the inverted. You'll see he's going to start with one stroke. He's going to go right, and then all the rest are doubles. That flips it. It's almost like if, like if I'm walking, if I'm walking, and I want to flip my steps. Instead of taking a whole step, I'm going to take a half step, and then my steps are now over. Now I'm kind of leading with my left foot. That's how you should think about it. And then to do the left hand, you do the same thing. Left hand starts with just one stroke. Right. On the downbeat, and the rest are doubles. Very good. Now let's try to experiment with some sounds. So I want uh, your right hand um, up on the ride, okay. and left hand on the snare. And let's go through all four of these. One, two, three, four. Right hand. Good. So right hand action. Now left hand. Okay, good. Now inverted. Yeah. Ooh. Now left hand and inverted. Yeah. <laughs> so your brain says, wait, I don't know what I'm doing, yeah. right? But he had it down here on the pad, didn't he? Control, and as yeah. soon as you hear that, got got right. it's like something's not right here. Alright, great job. Take a seat for him. That's awesome. Let's give it up for me. That was awesome. Take some courage too. Uh, that was awesome. So, man, what an awesome double stroke exercise, right? I mean, you can just be, you can be sitting at home and working on double strokes, and now you're thinking, okay, I'll find the quarter here. Sixteenth. All right, just accent the right hand. Put it up in the right. Right there, man. You're, I mean, you're learning a lot just with that. And your doubles are going to really, 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 really increase. Now. How to use doubles? Well, there's there's a fill that I like to show people to work on doubles because this is really bouncy. This isn't so much. Yeah, so this it's gonna be easier to do doubles here than here. So here's what I do: right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. Snare, tom, tom, snare. Right, left, right, left. Snare, high tom, four tom, snare. Now loop it. Now, going back to what I just taught you about 16th notes, if these are 16th notes, 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E, where's the quarter note? So, so where do you pump your fist? Nice. Put down your left hand, or foot. Nice. That's great, guys. So that's where you go, yes, okay. That's the, yeah, that's the fist bump. That's where I can, you know, because this might sound like a bunch of noise. So how do you associate this with any sort of music? Um, if I'm trying to, you know, write with Augustana, and they're saying, they're saying we went 16th notes, and you're like, crap, I know how to play along with this song, but I don't know where 16th notes are, pump your fists, right? Put down your left foot, a little faster, four eighth notes, start with quarters, bring your left hand, there's your eighth notes. Take that to your right hand. Bring in your left hand. There's 16. Boom. Now, double strokes. Using this fill. Right there's your fill. It doesn't have to be that sequence. You're just getting really comfortable with these doubles. And then, so now all of a sudden you have a sound that's different than singles. You can't really do that with singles. You know what I mean? It just starts to take on life. And this exercise really helped me get to that. Okay, so that's just a little tidbit, a little extra. Um, okay, going back to uh, rudiments. Um, I want to get into blast beats because blast beats are really just singles. And I'll show you what I mean. I have this tabbed out too. This gets fun. Uh, when I was learning blast beats, I would hear this one a lot. I'm like I have no idea what that is, what's going on. Or I'd hear this one. Once again, no idea what's going on. 
So I had to ask a friend, and he's like, oh, it's easy, man. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't sound easy at all. It's, it's always played fast, and it's always played so tight. How do these guys do that? And so he said, here's what you do. Bring your right hand and your left hand to your snare pad, okay, or to your snare. Play 16th notes. So remember, pump your fist, that's your quarter. To get the eighth notes, bring in your left hand. Take that to one hand. You have eight notes. One and two, and you get the 16th. Bring in your left hand, there's your 16th note. Boom, okay, I can do that. He said, now, I want you to match your feet to your right hand. The way to do that, take off your left hand. What do you have left? Eighth, Eighth notes. notes. Yeah, that's all right. I would do this. Right hand off. Where's the snare? In between the kicks. That's why blast beats sound so cool. Because that snare is right in between those kicks. Where's the right hand? With the kicks. On the cymbal. I said, okay, that makes sense, but what about when the feet sound like they're faster? He said, okay, go back to your snare, 16th notes. And so you know how we matched our feet to our right hand the first time? He said, I want you to double your feet. So make them twice as fast as your right hand. 16th notes with your feet. Now bring in your left hand. What's happening? They're matched. Now take your right hand up. So you either have right hand feet match, or your feet are double. Half, double. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That's cool. So I, I actually tabbed this out this morning for you, Christian, and for you other guys if you're interested in this, um, so you could see it instead of having to listen to me explain it. So there it is, right? That's the alternating blast with single kicks. And here is um, alternating blast with double kicks. Make sense? All right, that's the first kind of blast beat. What's the second? I don't have a good name for this, so I call it death metal blast. And there's probably another name out there, but this is how it sounds. Very bland, listen. Right? But you know how this sounds in a song. Listen to 11th Hour. There it is, right? What is that? What's going on? Well, just look. But look at the similarity between that and the first blast beat. What's my right hand doing? Matching the feet. No, feet are matched. What's my left hand doing? This is what's different. It's matching everything else. So instead of alternating like the first blast, this blast, they're all together. It, that's why it only sounds good, uh, I'd say up here. Because imagine how lame it's going to sound if it's <laughs> like, you're like, what the heck? But it sounds cool if it's <laughs> it sounds a little better. It sounds a little fuller. Okay, but that's the first one. Right hand's matching the feet. What do you think the second one is? Feet double. Bring in the left hand, match. Now here we go. Okay, now that's the big difference here. Um, this sounds pretty intense. This more like just like a punch. This sounds like a machine gun. Okay? And this is where we get into some linear drumming. Okay? But before I get there, I want to explain this. So alternating blasts, hands are alternating. Black metal blasts or together blasts, they're together. Okay? Feet are doing one of two things. Matching your right hand with the alternating or the black metal or they're doubling your right hand. So here's how I would practice this back in the day, and still a little bit to this day too. Alternating, feet match your right hand. 
See if I can keep up with it. Okay. So that's the big deal. Now the clutch thing about blast beats is can you keep this tight? And can you and can you start to implement some accent? So if you're doing a blast beat and you go four, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or if you're playing the straight old blast beat, can you uh, can you go? See, I'm doing different patterns with my right hand all the while, just keeping this going the whole time. That's the hard part for me. But that's what makes really cool sounding breakdowns, blast beats. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Are you doing every single downbeat on up the left? Left you foot. Doing, oh, really? Yeah, I actually lead with my left foot. Even on like like thirty and seven. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yes. Really? No, not every single downbeat. The singles? Mm -hmm. Right foot. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I have to be a right foot. Yeah, is that what most people do? With the, most people do it off the left? Yeah. Right. Right. Is right. it yeah? Right foot. When I started playing drums, uh -huh. do you guys know punk music? Yeah. Like the yeah. punk beat? I tried to play that at home. I was like, man, I want to play that beat. And a lot of guys would go, like a single foot. I'm like, okay, that's cool, but I want to be able to use both feet for this. Mm -hmm. I tried to lead with my right foot, like you guys would. Right? If you're just playing a pioneer of two, you're probably going to lead with the right foot. I tried that, I'm like, that feels so weird. Yeah. And this is before I could play double bass. Then I start with my left foot. Left, right, kick, right, kick, snare. It feels better. So I tried patterns of threes. I'm like, okay. That doesn't feel good. That feels good. I don't know, it's the way I'm wired. It's the way I golf. It's the way I play ice hockey. Everything with my feet, I lead left. Does it make it right? No. Does it make it wrong? I hope not. It's, working for, it's been working for me for a decade. But it makes stuff interesting, for sure. But all the same things work both ways. OK. But yeah, it's a good observation. Really good. So now let's talk about linear. Let's talk about these linear aspects of drumming. Um, and this, this, goes into, yeah, this goes into some independence. Well, first off, do you guys have any questions? We're, we're already about 40 minutes into the lesson. I've been get, getting carried away, because this is this curriculum's close to my heart. I love all this stuff. I've spent a thousand hours on this stuff. So, on yeah. cutting the ties, did, did you get my email? I did. That? I didn't have internet to watch the okay, uh, it was, movie, though. It's what, the part, what part where I think it? you're doing an alternating one on the ride. It's like a, I think it's like a dink, dink, dink. Blast beat. Yeah, it's a blast beat. But I, I couldn't quite It's an alternating it blast. Ba -na -na, ba -na -na. Yeah, it's um, very fast, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. JB loves blast beats. Yeah. <laughs> and so if I write something else, he goes, oh. I don't like that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, I know what you're going to like. So if I'm playing something that I think is cool, he'll just kind of cut it out. But it's, it's the alternating. Okay. Your feet are matching your right hand. Remember how I said right hand? Yeah. Feet match your right hand. Left hands come in on the alternate. 
right hand goes up on the ride, and it's every other. Okay. I use that one a lot. I have like a special bell on my ride, which which makes it kind of easier to hit versus having to hit like the actual ride bell. I have a bell that sits on top. So it's just like an inch bigger. And when I'm cruising into those parts, I think it goes. Something like that. One, two, three, four. Something like that where I'm playing 16th notes. I'm playing the pump beat. One, two, three. Does that sound about right? Yeah. That's just yeah. the alternating. Feet are matching the right hand. The left hand is really tight in between that. So that's what you want to listen for when you play those blasts. Listen for that snare hand. Get it tight. Slow it down. That song is really fast. <clears throat> um, but in regards to independence and rudiments, I want to show you guys something. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wanted to get to questions too. So yeah, that's a good question. Any other questions there? Um, what do you base your um fills off of, because that's like what I've always really, really liked about between you and uh, I think they've had two of the drummers, Breaking Benjamin, uh -huh. is a lot of the little detail, yeah. the, the tasties, if yeah. you will. So what do you really, like, where does that really come from? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good observation. So let's say you're playing for Augustana, okay? All right, up your fist, that's quarter note. So let's say I'm playing, and this would never work for rock. Well, it could. But he's probably not going to want you to do anything too intricate. Most of rock and pop is a two bar fill. Right? Two, two, two bar fill. It'll be one, it'll be one and two and three and four and out. Really short, right? That's your moment of glory. Here we go. But what I started to mess around with with ABR was instead of starting. On the three, which is that. Three and the four and the three and the four and the one, two, three, three and the four and the I started to think, what if I started on a different part of the beat? So if you're counting a song like this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and if I start on the one, how's it gonna sound? Let's just say the fill pattern is um single strokes with your hands. So counting one, two, three, four, one E into two E into three E into four E into out. Now you should just go through these. Okay. What about, so counting eighth notes, where would the end be right after the one? One and two and three and four. And so what I would do is I'd start to accent that with the kick. One and two and three. Get loose on me. So one and two and three and four and one. And I'd start to fill on that. As soon as I got it in my head, I'd be like, okay, where is that? One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay, I like that. One and two and three. So one and two and three. But first, get the sound in your head of where it is. One and two and three and four and one. Boom. When you get that in your head, start to fill on that. So one and two and three and four and one. Because it's not exactly where you'd expect to come in, a fill to come in. Now, let's go to the next one. One and now two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Okay. But at the end of two, one and two and. One and two and. One and two and. One and two, one and two, and one and two, and <laughs> one and two, and you start to do overfills like that. And you start to think about drumming is less about starting on the one, ending on the one, yeah. and more about I'm going to accent certain parts of the beat by starting to fill there. So one and two and three and four. And so let's just say. Uh, there's an ABR song. Let's say I'm ready to drum fill, and I'm going to start on the end of four, right before the one. So one, so one and two and three and four and 
one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and I'm gonna get the sound first in my head. And one and two and three and four and now I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna try it. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two. I'm gonna go for it on all the ends. So one and two and three and four. <laughs> and so you start to kind of displace the whole beat then, and you lose the audience, and then you come smashing in on the one. Yeah. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> about keeping track of that downbeat. But I used to just go through all the different eighth note patterns and figure out where I could start to fill. And confuse, I mean almost confuse the audience in a way. That was kind of my goal with a lot of these fills. Like, how can I start this in a way that the audience can be like, where is he, where is he, where is he? Downbeat. Yeah, that's like, uh Division, is that the 15, 16 one? Yeah. Like on the fills on there, we go like on the bells and the crossover. Right. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. I'm gonna wait till afterwards. Same thing with composure. So the one is right there, but I'm gonna keep going. One e and the two e and the three e and the four e and the one e and the two. And the three. I'm gonna wait, 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 and then smash into the beat. That was a little nuts. <laughs> it's Composer, a little nuts. Composure's a little nuts. I usually mess that up every single night. Jake's like, <laughs> 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 no, I don't. I've, I've been playing it for ten years. I better not. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think a lot of it is just spending a little bit more time with something. Like, let's take a look at this. So, let's say the fill. Let's say the sticky is right, left, right, kick. I love this film, I, and I discovered it on Composure. -na -na, -na 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 -na. And the reason I love it is because it's linear, only one sticking you know, at a time. And linear means only one hit at a time. That's linear. This is linear. This is linear. This is linear. That's all linear. The reason linear is cool, because it sounds almost like a big circle. You can't really tell where the downbeat is until all of a sudden you have a nonlinear hit two at a time. Or, or, okay? So, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one. Let's say that's our fill. I'm going to start on the one. So, one E and a, two E. And this is an example of a place you could keep your hi hat going for independence. So that's your fist bump right there. Okay. Now, what if I started on the end of one? So one and two and three and four. Get that in your head. One and. That's where I'm going to start my right hand on my snare. So one and two and three and four and one. Now it's a completely different feel. It was one E and the two E and the three and the four E and the one. Now it's one N, one N, one N. So one N, two N, three N, four. Now I have to figure out how these work together. One and two, one and two, and three and four and one. Okay. Try it again. Here we go. One and two and three and four and one. And two and three and four and four. Okay. So one, two, three, four. One. Instead of just all by just displacing it, one eighth. Um, then you start to throw in like the metal fills, two hands, four hands, and 
with six hands. You've heard this a lot, right? And, and, and you start to go. That's all, like, I call them the metal fills, because it's two on the feet and whatever you want on the hands. <laughs> what if you did that in the same way, right? One and two and three and four and one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one. But if you start on the end, so one and two and three. Whoa! It flips it. See, this is this inverted thing I'm talking about. And that that's where I get a lot of my fills from. Just wait a little bit. Instead of it being... I'll just wait a little bit. You'll make the audience hang on. So one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And you kind of lost me there. You're like, I don't know. Boom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then I have your attention. Hopefully. Okay, so real quick, I want to go through what I was originally just talking about because this, this is where this is where you, you get a lot of the juice in drumming fills and independence from, at least I have personally. Personally. I'm gonna send you this worksheet. But here's what we're gonna do. This applies to the US and in large part. Applied rudiments and orchestration. Singles are what? One on each hand, right? So here, pull your chair closer for me, Wesson. You can play on this tom, tom here. Okay, actually, you can probably lower that leg if you want to. You all right there? Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Okay. It's a little weird to play. These are mesh heads. Um, I noticed that. They're they so little. they're so sweet. Yeah, they're so sweet. They're great for practicing. Okay. So singles are what? Singles are really the essence of drumming. Right, right, left, right, left. Try that for me. Good. So this is my quarter note. You're playing 16th notes. One E and the two E. Uh, you're playing doubles there, so go back to singles. So right, left, right, left, right, left, right. There you go. Nice. Those are 16th notes played as singles. Now, those are singles or ones. Let's go to doubles or twos. So right, right, left, left. Uh, we're not going to change the tempo. We're just going to change the group. There you go. Let's go back to singles. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. There you go. Go back to doubles. Nice. Okay. So we did ones, we did twos. What's next? Threes. Groupings of threes. For this, right, left, left. Try that for me. Now, try to keep that going. I'm going to try to confuse, well, I'm not going to try to confuse you, but I might. So these are 16th notes. One E and a two E and a E and that means I'm gonna keep my quarter note time over here. You have to keep that going. Here we go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two. Groupings of three as 16th notes. Now put your right hand up on that rod and keep the same stick. This is something I use a lot. White lock, for example. Ding, 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 gap, boom. Sorry, I messed up. Bang, 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 gap, boom, boom. That is a cool sound. One E and a two and E four E O and E three. Good. Go back to singles. Keep your right hand up there. Good. Go back to doubles. Ah, uh, doubles. There it is. Good job. Go back to threes. Good job. Go to paradiddles. These will be your fours. Have you ever played a paradiddle before? Right, left, right, right. Left, right, left, left. That's a grouping of four. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And this is going to confuse your brain to have your right hand up here. Ding, 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 ding. But you'll get used to that sound. Ding, 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 ding. ding. That's the right side of a paradiddle. That's a group in a four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All rudiments are groupings or stickings, right? 
singles, doubles, ones, twos, threes, fours, and so on. Very good job, man. So let me show you a little trick here. Here's what I'll do. I'll keep my quarter note, split my hands, singles, singles, ones, okay? Then doubles. Keep the quarter note time the whole time. If you need to go back to the top, just do it. So really focus on what you're doing. There's grouping of two. Now we're gonna do threes, starting with the right hand. So we're grouping of threes. But they're still counted 16th notes, which means there's four strokes per pulse. One to people, one to people, one to people, one to people. 20, up to 10, up to 10, 40, and 40. Now we're gonna do paradiddles. Paradiddle, paradiddle. Group in a four, I love that. We're gonna do five. A group in a five is right, left, right, left, left. One, two, three, four, five. Now, how can I play fives if I'm counting 16th notes, which is group in a four? There's still only four strokes per pulse. One, two, three, four, five. That fifth hit is gonna be with the hi-hat. One, two, three, four, five, because there's only four strokes per pulse. Now listen to what sound you're getting out of that right hand. You know, why do you think it is that I say play your right hand on a different sound? There's only two hits. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. A lot of drumming is figuring out the sound that you're making. Not so much the sticky. Okay, then we go to sixes. Para diddle diddle. Para diddle diddle. Okay. So para are the single. Diddles means two. Diddle diddle. Two, two. Okay, so para diddle diddle. Okay. That's six strokes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Play it again, it's quarter note. Okay, so those sixes. Now sevens. Okay, now eights. Triple power diddle. Okay, and I'll just maneuver all those. I'll go through them from top to bottom. Singles. Doubles. Threes. Paradiddles. Hey, buddy. Uh, fives. Sixes. Paradiddle diddles. Sevens. All right, and there you have so many fills. Just with that ability to create a quarter note with your left foot and have all those different stickings with your right. Now, let me explain something to you um, that helped me really understand threes, fives, and sevens. The hardest, you know, out of all those, threes, fives, and sevens. Threes, think Tom one. Okay? Right, right, left, left. Group in a three. For fives, use Tom one and Tom two. Now, what do you think we're going to use for sevens? Tom one, Tom two, Tom three. How many strokes is that? Hmm. What's that five? It's seven. Oh, this, this. What's this one? Five. Yeah. What's this one? Three. So threes, think Tom one. Fives, think Tom one and Tom two. And, and for sevens, think. So you got boom, 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 boom. Now that's important because your brain can then associate when I go to say, hey, you know, read, play, play a grouping of seven between your ride and your snare, you are gonna think automatically. Okay. And so it helps you establish that clean break between, okay, how do I go from playing in four to playing in a group in a seven? Okay, so I recommend this. I'm gonna actually send over this worksheet to you guys. Uh, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, and eights. And you guys can work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are out of time. Are you guys here from the meet and greet too? Are any of you guys? You guys are? Oh no, there was one. I'm not. That's what this is going to be. 
as you can see. Yeah. You have the backdrop, the whole band comes in, you guys get pictures and stuff. So if you guys want pictures, um, or if you want to sit down and jam for a bit on the kit, you know, one of them up, you get a chance to play, you get a chance to play. But do you guys have any questions at all about I know we went over a lot. Um, what was that site you're using the tab stuff? It's called Groove Scribe. There's okay. a guy named Mike Johnston who created it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Mike Johnston's great. Yeah. He's a great teacher. Um, and there's a, uh, I recommend him if you're looking into more lessons. He's, mm -hmm. he's excellent. Um, but you can use this site to tab out stuff. So I'll actually be sending you guys these tabs okay. uh, shortly after the lesson. Right. Cool. So you guys have a lot to work on. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll be teaching again in March if you guys want a follow-up lesson on Skype. Um, I love teaching. It's my passion when I'm not on tour. And so uh, if you guys want more lessons, I'd be more than happy to work with you on Skype from my home after I'm done recording the new record. Cool. I am, it's kind of not really drum related, but I was just wondering, like, do you like touring better or do you like writing music better? Like, as far as when it comes to albums and stuff? I like being with my wife a lot. So that requires me to be home. <laughs> but um, touring, touring, is, touring is awesome because I get to meet a lot. But it's tough. I'm, I'm five weeks in the tour right now. You know, I haven't. I saw my wife last week for three days, but I haven't been home. I slept in my bed. Um, haven't been around the farm or seen my family or anything in a while. So, yeah, it's it's a sacrifice. But writing music is fun because I get to be home for it. Yeah. Uh, actually, just from the engineering side, if you can answer it, uh, where are you guys tracking? Oh, in Lancaster. The same place we've tracked our last two records. Okay. Grant Carson, uh, Slo uh, Slo uh, Carson Slovak has a studio. Uh, it's called Atrium Audio. Okay. It's wonderful. 20 minutes from my house. Drive there. <laughs> That's I easy. <laughs> I practice in the morning, drive to the studio. Like I, I, I play the three or four songs I'm going to play that day, mm -hmm. drive to the studio, record those songs, and then drive home that night. It's so sweet. Nice. So like if I'm, like if I'm struggling with a new part, I'm like, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna play this. I'll sit at home and be like, um, all right, I'm gonna work on this. You know, like I have a new song, I haven't, I haven't played it in six weeks. And it like uses a lot of bells. And if I'm in the studio working on that, I'm gonna get so frustrated. I'm gonna be, you know, oh, all right, take one. Click, 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 click. Ah, start over, start over. And by the time I got to do that four or five times, I'm defeated. <laughs> so if I'm home and I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. Then I can figure it out and then I get in there. One, two, three, four. And now I can track it with confidence because there's such a big difference on a record between. Uh, and you, know, you can hear it. You can hear that. You know, you can hear that 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 you know beef behind the. There's energy. Pit. In it. Yeah, exactly. So I like to be home. I can I can work on stuff. I can warm up. I can have fun. And then I get there and I'm just ready to shred. Cool. Yeah. Um, two. Did you use a map live and. Um, after playing for like 10 years, is there, are there ever nights where you're just like annoyed to play a song? You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure you guys have played composure like a lot. So yeah. at this point, now is it like, okay, we're playing this song again? No, <laughs> it's really not for me. It's, it doesn't feel like that. If anything, I don't want to play a song because it's so challenging. <laughs> okay. There's certain songs every night I get to, I'm like, all right, here we go. Like, there's a song we have called Vital Signs on this tour. And there's a part that's like, um, and it's like this crazy symbol part that I got to nail. My hands are everywhere for it, you know. And after I nail it, it's awesome. But I go into the song, like, okay, here we go. Vital signs. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, this part's not bad. And then you get to the next part, and it's just it's just like a brain fart every night. And I actually messed it up in soundcheck yesterday. My my stick caught and went flying, 
And the band just like looked at me and stopped. And I'm like, well, I guess I better not mess up Vital Signs. Because <laughs> there's other songs I can mess up and the band's fine, you know. Vital Signs, it's not gonna work. <laughs>